Hedge fund property in Gulf Shores. That's Corey. <laughs> yeah. Right? This is what he does all the time. Um, who started just flipping lots, working in a kitchen, worked his way up to management. We're actually going to talk about this later today. Got into real estate and just has kind of hustled, grinded another step by step, right, to become a net worth millionaire, which I think is a lot of people in this room. Um, and so, there, you know, there's different ways to do this thing. Mm. And we always want to learn from and have people in the room that are in the game because this game moves pretty quickly, right? Um, Super so, quick. who am I? My name is, is Justin Myers. Um, I started as a mortgage broker in 2005 in Tampa. So I had a front row seat to watching the whole economy meltdown. That was the third hardest hit market in the country. Uh, so yeah, I was 25 years old when 37% of the equity evaporated overnight, which put me on this journey of, you know, I like making interesting choices, moving, start my life over, got divorced. Come on in, Nikita. There's a couple of seats. There's a seat right up here next to these two handsome gentlemen. Okay, well, one, two. We got I see one spots. over there, I see, one yep. on, I see two on the side. Good to see you, Dion. Um, and I am really, I've done a lot of things here. I run a real estate team here with Corey. Um, we also are really involved in the community. So if you're around tomorrow, we started Pints for Purpose. So we'll be raising money for the Humane Society at Yeehaw Brewing. That is open to anyone in the community. Uh, really passionate around network and education. Right? I think real estate is how you create, it's how we all have access to wealth in this country. Mm -hmm. Realistically, if you look at the gap, right, the wealth gap in this country is directly tied to home ownership. Mm -hmm. Across any demographic level, it's totally time to home ownership. So we wanna get you in here, give you the tools to go build some personal wealth right, on our residential side and then build out, show everyone how to invest and create wealth in real estate because long-term it's one of the safest, most stable safest ways to do so. You can make, for sure. Don't wanna hear? about you so who are you what do you, what do, you do? do who do you need who to know? You know and here's what this looks like effectively right we're talking about prospecting marketing and networking i'm sure all of us do 17 things right and yet when i come to these things i'm looking for one specific thing right hey my name is justin i am looking for lots in east and south knoxville i'm a local realtor because that's a message that i find people come and talk to me if I'm looking for those lots and I also work with luxury, and if you need a cabin, and it, it gets washed out. So we're going to start right up front. Who are you? And what are you looking for? I'm a realtor in Knoxville at ESP Realty, and I've been a realtor for four years. I would love to learn more about investing my own money, but I would really like to do a fix and flip. Awesome. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, Sandy. I'm Kathy Wietrick, and I'm a realtor with Justin and Corey here at Keller Williams. And this is all so new to me and I never even dreamed of investing until Keller Williams gave me a vision. And I would love to either flip or buy and hold. And that's probably going to be my retirement. Awesome, I love it. Allison. Hey there, I'm Allison, I'm from Independence Title. Um, who do I need to know? I need to know real estate agents and lender. Also, you mentioned at the last closing that you were at that a lot of title companies don't know how to work with wholesales and things like that. We do know how to do that. So if you guys have any questions, you definitely come to us. Thank you. Jeremiah, who are you? Jeremiah Holmes, a uh, wholesaler, investor, um, farm. Yeah, that's pretty much it. A lot of people. Sweet. Good. Glad you're here, Jeremiah. Good evening. My name is Tristan Russo. I'm uh, currently getting my real estate license as we speak. Uh, should have it done in about two months is what I'm estimating. Right. So coming to the meetings, learning as much as I can, meeting as many people as I can. Glad you're here, Tristan. Nick, who are you? Uh, I am Nick Wilson. Uh, I am completely new to this. Uh, this is my second meeting and uh, my wife and I are in the education phase. We are absorbing all of the things that you need to know about real estate in order to invest in real estate. Um, so really I'm excited for this particular presentation because this is one of the ground floor items um, that I'm, we're looking at. So. Sweet. Glad you're here. Love it. My name is Matsayam. 
Hey, no time. Parker, Realtors Advantage Plus. Um, my purpose here is I just want to learn everything and just build my foundation. I'm Spanish speaking. I speak Acateco. It's a Mayan dialect. Um, I'm from I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, but my parents are from Guatemala. But uh, I'm just driven to help people. And uh, that's all. We're so we're so glad you're here. Yeah. Yeah, my name is Patrick. Um, I'm actually a new uh, real estate agent as well. I've been licensed for a little less than two months now. And I'm here because I want to learn about investing. I've done a little bit on my own, been a little lucky, but I just want to know how to do it properly over and over. So. Awesome. For for the many agents that are here today, welcome. We're glad you're here, right? We're in the only industry where your success is really dependent on your your collaborators, your other agents. So that's why we invite so many of you here. And Dion has a service for all of y'all. Yeah, I do the sign-up. It's a real estate lending service. So I put the signs up, say, I'm going to meet realtors that are looking to leverage their business. Possibly working. I need to talk to them. Good. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, let's go. You got it. Love it. No, I'm glad you're here. That's awesome. Glad you're here. It's good, it's good to see you. Uh, my name is Kevin Nupar. Uh, I'm not a professional at this market. Uh, I'm a grad research assistant in energy materials. Uh, I'm French, and I'm looking for a fixer upper. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I love it. Welcome, Kevin. So you're up, Jesse. My name is Jesse Houston. I'm with Bain Realty. I'm a property manager. Uh, I started off managing my own properties, and uh, one thing led to another. We're over a dozen now, and uh, so now we're at a point where we can start scaling. I'm actually beginning to market. And uh, I, I'm i a finance geek, and I got into this because I figured out that I just really like giving people a home. I really like uh, helping <coughs> serve people. And um, I think uh, one one thing that I can do that a lot of folks can't is because I'm a finance geek, and very good to sell spreadsheets and fun, boring stuff like that. Um, I can help you figure out if a, a deal is actually a good deal uh, from a return perspective, just uh, uh, relative to what other opportunities that are out there. Love so uh, what, what I need right now is uh, I would really love to meet an investor with maybe a small portfolio, say two to maybe half a dozen properties, thereabouts. And um, I think at, at this moment, that's probably where my sweet spot is. Cool. Glad to have you. There is, if you guys just came in, there's two seats. There's that tall one and the short one right up front here. If you want to grab a seat, it's, it's going to be a long, come be comfortable. Please come sit down. Come sit I'm going to go get up and go get more chairs, guys. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, Make yourselves comfortable. That's true. Yes, that would be great. Thank you, yeah. Jesse. Yeah, thank you, Jesse. Yes. I appreciate it. Um, we got the back. I'm a scientist at the Overt National Lab, and uh, I'm probably a potential investor. Um, so I'm here to meet with realtors and uh, property managers and such, and to most importantly to learn. Great. Awesome. I'm Nikita Hudson. I'm a little city with Kelly Williams, um, and I found who I needed in the last meeting. So thank you. Hey, <laughs> and I'm doing my first flip, so pray for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go. I'm Joel Reyes. I'm a real estate agent, and uh, I'm here to learn how to find deals. Glad you're here. Dalton, you want to chime in? Who are you? Uh, my name is Dalton Bradley. I'm the creative director at a company called Horizon Media Group, and I'm here to video and cover the whole event today. As you can see, I've got Corey and Justin up there mic'd up uh, so that we can hear them clearly, so that we can get some entertaining and educational uh, clips out on socials, as well as like a full version of this meeting on YouTube to watch later. So if you want to market effectively. Yeah. Dalton also does the real estate photography, videography, 
editing, and they have uh, some follow-up services. So if you've got a database, they can help you create a, a touch contact plan to follow up with that. Yes. I have a show. Invest in my first property this year. Um, hi everyone, my name is Kamara Ron. I'm currently in high school planning to just um, graduate early in December to start my real estate journey. Yes! Everybody, I'm at KW Vision in Alberta. My name is Amber and I specialize with working with the military. Wait, wait, wait in the back! Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yeah, jump in the uh, My name is Will Sargent. I work uh, I'm a loan officer at Foundation Mortgage. And um, working with, with investors, um, refinance, purchase, do DSCR stuff, do the whole gamut. Um, but I'm really here to learn for myself. So. Love it. Welcome, welcome. <coughs> Uh, Jackson Kirkpatrick, uh, I sell insurance for Allstate Property Casualty. Um, I do work with lenders and loan officers. Uh, I do try to make the process a little smoother with the not so fun part uh, with insurance related um, and just here to learn a little bit. Hi, I'm Krista Bentley. I'm an agent with Todd Williams at this office. Just coming to Michelle Goldencamp, um, Heller Williams, Realtor. Um, my husband and I are, are getting ready to close on our first flip house. And um, I'd love to work with other investors. All right. Congrats. That's awesome. Travis. Travis Dupre, a couple weeks here in this office. I'm um, here for networking and learning. At the moment. <laughs> I'm Crystal Clark. I'm retired military. I'm kind of an accidental investor, and my agent Karen Callaway is here. Uh, she's helping me get a roof over my own head, and then I can move into building my own investment portfolio later on this year. I'm Zach Darrow. I own uh, Dunray Hallway. We do demolition, junk removal, material hauling, and dumpster rentals. I'm um, also looking for a primary residence, uh, preferably the Maryville area. So. Jason Fields, Devoted Home Group here at Keller Williams. We've got a team. Um, I've done flips. Uh, something that I would like to get into are storage units. So if you know anybody looking to sell, send them my way. All right, Justin Reblitis with First Call Claims. I'm a uh, public adjuster, so I hope you guys don't ever have to call me. But if you have an uh, insurance claim, or a fire, anything like that, we will walk you through that whole process and make sure you get all the money you need to rebuild or move on. Love it. Send me the chat later. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> that a little note. Absolutely. My name is Chris, Chris Davis. I run Approach Lending in Knoxville. I lend a private money on behalf of our family office here locally. We mostly lend local until about two months ago. I did a deal for him in Florida, yeah. and we dealt with Georgia, North Fresh Carolina. Stuff. Pretty much if it's a southern city, well run conservative state we kind of like it demographics are good so um yeah i think we got a pretty good product and i'll just talk to you about it i'm gregory crane i'm a note buyer so looking for seller finance uh privately held mortgage notes that people might need to get a payout for um so looking to network with realtors uh, wholesalers who might need to uh to sell a note that they have to carry back because they couldn't sell it so um, Sean Barker, I uh, deal with land, so I'm always looking for 15 acres or more. I work with developers nationwide uh, to find tracts of land for home development, high density residential stuff. Uh, I also do smaller stuff or uh, timber. Cool. Cool. <coughs> so, I'm Trent Rogers, my wife Haley. Um, I recently made the career switch to go real estate full time, passed my test, sort of shopping brokers right now, I guess you might say. Hello, man. <laughs> yeah, I think there might be a little bias in there. Uh, Success but, leaves clues. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I think a lot of us can relate. My breakdown right now is deal flow, is finding deals. Um, you know, we've kind of gone through the education, the analysis paralysis. We're kind of at the other end of that now where it's like, okay, let's just freaking go. And we've been banging our head against the wall for probably six, eight weeks now just trying to find out. Buy box is pretty particular. We like Blount County, you know, sure. Louisville, Greenback, uh, yeah. Friendsville, Maryville, of course. So uh, just looking to 
you know, got to trip over a deal or two along the way. That's awesome. Okay, I'll close it out. I'm Karen Callaway. Yes, I am Crystal's agent. Um, I'm a real estate agent at Keller Williams Work out at the Bearden office. Um, mostly I do first time home buyers and then the downsizers in my demographic that are getting out of the great big Farragut houses and, and want a single level in Teleco Village. So there you go. Um, but I am planning to become an investor myself this year, so we're just here for the education and the networking. It's amazing. Welcome, everybody. That's awesome. Legalese. Yes. Legalese. Invest at your own risk. Right? Real estate investing. What is going on? Welcome, my friend. There's two seats up here. If you guys want to grab them. A couple up here. Yeah, please. <laughs> Introduce your inner. Yeah, inner. Charles, who are you? We're, we're going through. I'm just lucky to be here, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, Charles runs an investor meetup. Do you want to plug it real fast? It was last night? Uh, yeah, Sono Investor Group. Uh, we usually hang out and drink beers, talk real estate, and other kind of investing. Uh, a great hub if you want to know what's happening in South Knoxville. There are a lot of exciting things that are going to continue to happen in South Knoxville. Charles is an expert there, so he's somebody that I'd go to if you want to know what is happening, if you want to get involved in the community, understand that the business, he's been invested there, and he's been a giant advocate for it uh, for years. Great, great guy. Um, Yep, we were out there last night, met some friends. Want to introduce yourself really quickly? Yeah, my name is Khalil Miller. I'm just a local investor, just trying to learn. Excellent. Do you have some deal flow right now? Working on it. Okay, yeah. good, good. That's why we're all here. Fantastic. Cool. Legalese? Yes, uh, yeah, legalese. 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 Okay, so investing is a, a real estate investing, I heard people talk about flipping, is a high risk, high reward business. Right? Flippers like to come in and tell the 10 times they made money this year, not the one deal that like offset two or three of those deals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Corey's got a flip he's going on right, right now. now. How, how, how far to go over budget this is? Oh, right? double. Probably yeah. double. <laughs> yeah, it was a 50K initial budget, and we're, we're going to hit 100K, whether I like it or not. Yes. It is what it is. You buy, you buy historic homes, you get historic problems. It just yes. comes with it, right? So... Verify everything here, right? We're going to give you great advice. Like you're going to invest at your own risk, and you know we're not experts on everything, and we haven't vetted every single person that's in this room, right? We're, we're collectively trying to, to get some things, and uh, definitely want to get professional advice when it comes to taxes, when it comes to the law, and some of the other things we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. Great. Yep. So. Yep. So kind of. Let's set the, set stage, the stage, right? We've got. Uh, a room full of, of a lot of investors and a lot of real estate agents. Yep. So we're covering both. So if you're in those, you are in the sales and marketing business. And we are going to talk about a framework that's going to work for both. If you're an agent, the idea is your agent business should be your cash ATM. And it should be an attraction, right, for your acquisition arm. If you're an investor, the same thing. You are in a sales and marketing business. Mm -hmm. So. <sighs> yeah, really, I guess really why that means you're, you're looking to... Wholesale, fix and flip, um, buy and hold. Nothing really happens until I've got the lead, right? I've got a, I've got a number. I've got something to kind of work with here to run down. And so, really, that only comes through those activities based around like prospecting, networking groups, say like this, um, and then just active marketing. And we're going to kind of break down some of those systems along the way. Sure. Right. Yeah. Okay, so the biggest thing and the biggest challenge when we're new, right, is, is how am I being purposeful? Mm -hmm. Like, do I have some sort of return on my activities? Do I have some sort of metrics? If you're analytical, do I have a key performance indicator? Like, how do I know if I'm being successful in my activities? Like, where the deals are coming from and how I'm sourcing them? Because it's a lot of fun for me to go hang out and talk with investors if I can do that all day and not necessarily be the guy getting the business or the gal getting the business. Right, so how am I being purposeful? How am I achieving that objective? Like we talked about today, when I come in here with an elevator pitch, like I find that attracts people to me, right? Like everyone knows, we've been working with Jesse, that's very clear, like, oh, Jesse's a property manager. Jesse can help you and he's looking for uh, a two to six unit portfolio. So that's, an order. that's a very clear ask that may pop in my head, you know, a day or a week from now. Yeah, yes. I'd say the real the focus in there, there's one line that's like, you know, go small to go big. I think really that's kind of what this is going to like highlight on, right? Is like the 
the narrower your focus is really much, very much like a laser focus on something. And the smaller you can make that focus, you'll find more opportunities in there versus trying to have necessarily a wide net or a spray and pray. Oftentimes, if the more niche you go into your area or um, what you're looking for, the more, more opportunities you're going to create, or at least the ones that you're really looking for versus stuff that you might just trash and really mm, not no, I think that's, to do that's with a it. great that's a great point right we're gonna come back to that yep we'll kind of go into some background a little bit on uh, yeah on each of us here right you want to go back who's this kid sure <laughs> so this is that must have been 2011 so I moved here in in 2010 I was separated I was was broke I was probably the only mortgage broker who at 05 who didn't make any money before the market crashed I was watching jewelry salesman and cell phone guys make 19K a month, and I just was not very good at uh, selling those, those loans to other people. Yeah. So when we started this, um, I ended up starting a marketing company. Yeah. And, and I've tried a little bit of everything along the way, and some of it was good, some of it was bad. Uh, if you can be broke for a decade, highly recommend it. When you get, <laughs> by the time you're 40, you'll know so much you'll be an expert, unless mm. you speak on stages, mm. but most of us like making some money, so I wouldn't recommend doing it. Uh, the long, hard way. Um, what I did find, though, was going after one niche. So I did a sign spending company, right? Like, once you dive in to being an entrepreneur, I remember seeing this. I had started a transaction coordination company here, and I read an article on you know, Business Insider or something that it was like, most entrepreneurs say they wouldn't do it again if they started. But you're in the middle of the channel, so you just have to keep going. So I was like, okay, I'm already doing this. How am I going to make more money? I have no plan, no ROI. And then I uh, started a sign spending company on the side, and then I was like, well, how do I do this? I gotta teach myself marketing. So then how do I go sell sign spinning? Well, it's basically impressions. So I'm gonna go talk to radio guys and reverse engineer and then go find traffic counts and then go talk to Cricket and Pizza Hut and find out about net 90, you know, getting paid 90 days after you get a contract and being like, this is a lot of work to make the same amount of money I was making waiting tables. Mm -hmm. But I got a, a ton of experience. So we've been, between the two of us, we've tried all of every entrepreneurial, like now we try to use some other tools here, but in terms of like hustling, bandit signs, yeah. standing on the side of the road, you know, producing radio shows, spending money for other, other folks. We've, I think, tried it all over the years. And Corey's got a very big yeah. background in marketing. Yeah, on definitely, a, definitely this Like one. an institutional so, level. Yeah, so the next one. Um, so prior to, prior to real estate, I was a manager, owner, operator of a small restaurant franchise down in Florida. So this is actually one of like our, our Christmas photos. I tried to find a picture of myself on the side of the road wearing a big hot dog suit, like waving it, you know, literally doing the exact same kind of thing. Um, but it gave me a good, interesting perspective on ways of both like attractive marketing as well as like the networking thing of being like super embedded into the community where like all of our restaurants, now there's six of them, are very much hubs of the neighborhoods that, that they surround. Like that is the go-to spot on Saturday after soccer practice or Friday nights or things like that. Like they just become these like little cultural community centers after any uh, hurricanes got we had like way back and like places were closed, like all those restaurants become like little hubs and resources because right. we would oftentimes like have power and people would come there and hang out and we could wholesale like our I have produce bought, and foods through and like we'd groceries sell groceries from the yeah. location. This is yeah. my dad's favorite restaurant. The other's six locate the other one of the locations is my dad's favorite spot yeah. down in Florida. And so that's I guess a little bit about my background in terms mm -hmm. of it's all been about community based, just how can I give back how can we give back and serve and also do some cheesy shit along the way to attract <laughs> attract some impressions uh, and attract some eyes right at all. But um, really I guess the goal in all this is just to create that cash machine, right? Creating yes. something that's gonna be creating predictable opportunities time and time again. And we like to frame that in, in a topic called zone, right? And we're gonna go through kind of what that analogy uh, means here. Yeah, right. so I think what we do very well is, is we're gonna give you some simple frameworks you can build off of. But the most important thing is that you have predictable revenue. Like you're running a business. If you're not in here to, to run a business, it's gonna be very challenging. One of the big challenges I had was like, oh, I'm not a salesperson, right? And I was not a salesperson. Hey, money's not that important to me. You know what happens? I did not make a lot of money for longer mm. than almost anyone I've met in this game. Did a lot of very interesting things. I mean, lots of people, tens of thousands of dollars, right? Because money wasn't that important to me. And then I watched people that money was important to, they were like, oh great, yeah, I'll work the easy deals. 
good luck with that hard one <laughs> where you're learning so much and you feel so valuable, yeah. right? Um, so how do we have pred predictable revenue, right? It's, it's one, it's having a predictable system and then it's gonna be measuring. So we're gonna talk about what that predictable system looks like. So Corey, yep. how do we zero in on our target market? Sure, um, I mean, getting into that, it starts off with just researching and selecting where you want to invest in. Right? Gotcha, so how, how, let's say I'm new to this, right? I don't know, there's all of this information. Where would I yeah. start in trying to figure out what my niche might be or where I should be going? So I think it, we always try to begin with the end in mind in like, and if we're talking about like investing in properties, really understanding what this long-term game is gonna look like for you, mm -hmm. or these areas that maybe I want to just, I'm gonna fix and flip over here, but I'm going to buy and hold in this area. Like having a good understanding of where you wanna go in the end and then sort of like working backwards from there. You know what I'm hearing actually, and it's taking a step back here, is the mm -hmm. one thing. Sure. So if you haven't read this, it's a book you can get anywhere. Gary Keller, the founder of Keller Williams, and Jay Papasan wrote it which is just what's the one thing, right? How do I set a five-year goal? And how do I work backwards all the way until like what are my activities doing today that are gonna drive me towards that five-year goal? By asking just what's the one thing I could be doing right now that would make everything else easier or unnecessary? So in this case, like having a clear idea, like if I'm looking to retire, hey, do I wanna be fixing and flipping and generating earned income that's gonna be taxed as earned income or do I want to be moving towards some sort of like a hold strategy, even if I have less cash flow, which is going to generate right tax benefits, uh, depreciation, right, and perhaps a better longer term strategy. Like that's the, and I think yeah. so. That's it. So let's say whatever I've determined, we're going to go for the sake of this. We're going to talk about fixing and flipping. Of course, that's what everyone wants to do because it's fun and exciting yeah. and you get big checks until yep. you find out what a pain in the ass it is. No doubt. Yeah. Uh, until the honeymoon phase wears, wears yes. off and you're like double your time into it and sure. all that kind of stuff, yeah. right? But how would I go find, like, what would I do to research? What, what are some resources you so can use? So there's tools out there. I mean, there's things like KGIS. I hate to be, like, I mean, the, I wouldn't say I hate to do it, but, like, there's certainly, find you a good agent, right? Find you a good realtor who can really help you, like, disseminate and dive into this data. Why, why do you hate to do that? Find you a yeah. good agent. There are people <laughs> here that will go look for deals for mm. you uh, not for free, but on a commission basis. So you don't have to pay them unless they bring you a deal yeah. and they're in this room and there's 6,000 of them in our MLS. Right. Like, why would you pull your own comps? Yeah. The computer's not going to send you a deal one day, but this agent may. Hmm. Right. Yeah. And in, and in that, right. When you're, when it, I mean, the, the tax records are a very like powerful tool. And I would say as agents, sure. we have like a lot of powerful tools at our disposal, which certainly makes that easy. So if I want to like, zero in on this specific area, I can then even highlight all the way down to, okay, these are like my non-owner occupied. These are people that are like landlords that hold these properties that I might be able to like reach out and market and network to. Um, or I might be looking for somebody that's um, lived in a home a long time, right? Like high equity, 30 years plus lived in the home, probably gonna be a good person to at least wanna try to establish communication with to create that opportunity for yourself in the future. Right, so um, a good agent will help you disseminate and kind of build that list out for you to then go and deploy and start marketing towards. Um, some other tools you could use to, to research if you're trying to determine. Um, I'm trying to think what was act, what's accessible to a consumer because I know what, what I'd want to look at. I'd want to look at uh, the city has code violation lists. Sure. You can get that information. There's uh, tax delinquency. You can get that information. There's some condemned properties. Um, I think the city is a great resource. Uh, there's someone, I can't think of her, they call her the Queen of Blight, um, that has, there's some, some programs that the city has where they're, they're trying to get you to come in and renovate. That's a good, a good resource mm -hmm. if you're looking to do that. And other investors. Is there anybody that's got a very specific niche that'd like to share how they formed it? Yeah, sure. I go to my local uh, neighborhood association. We have a resource officer, and they usually tell us where the drug houses are, and we can <laughs> talk to them. <laughs> and then they're, they're happy to try to find a, a buyer for those. No, I, I love it, right? We're, we're providing solutions. solutions. Yeah. It's a problem, so you just go, who would know about the problems? People that are embedded in the community. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, really, the next step there is just developing your, your value proposition. From 
I'd What's say, a value proposition? Well, so that's just going to be what, uh, what am I proposing out there, right? I mean, the, the most uh, straightforward one is just like we buy houses cash, right? I'll buy your house cash as is, where is. Very straightforward. Everybody I mean, uses it. It works. It truly, it does. Has anybody looked at Open Door or OfferPad or Purple Brick? Anyone ever looked at the websites? Hands? No one? Yeah, yeah. 100%. Chris has? Take a look at them. They've got a really great value proposition. It's convenience. Mm -hmm. There are people, and if they did any research, they would know they're not saving money. Open Door is not charging them less in fees. They've actually just had to settle. They got sued. They had a lawsuit because their, yeah. their advertising was fraudulent on this stuff. But what they are doing is they're selling convenience, eh? that we're going to come here. You don't have to go through the hassle of selling your, of selling your home. Or people that think they can't possibly sell their home for whatever reason, mm. th those might be there. Yeah. Sure. Anybody got it? Jeremiah, what's your value proposition? You're at, um, Jeremiah is a celebrity now. He's got TV ads, and he is a very <laughs> skilled wholesaler. Um, my value is like, well, I mean, it's I will buy your house, and I will even pay for closing. So, I mean, like in a suggestion, like Open Door, like I'm trying to grow mine to the equivalent of Open Door, but local. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I mean, basically that's pretty much how I do it. Um, what else? Do you have any other, like, questions? We're going to go back to you. I have, I have a lot of questions. questions. We get into the, some of the more specific prospecting and marketing stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because the, ne the next step, once you kind of have, have figured out what your – value proposition is going to be in this is just starting to build a brand around that. And that might be like your company brand and or just yourself, your personal brand as somebody who's just known in the space for actively doing these kind of deals. I wish Randy Wagner was here tonight. He does mm, a good job. Kills it. But he does a good job of, of like having a, a brand, yeah. like, like a recognizable brand and being consistent about it. Jason, what's the Devoted Home Group? What's your brand? to our customers, obviously. Um, we're really more family than anything. That's where we, we're actually going to be. Uh, our YouTube page is getting ready to finally kick off, and then we might be doing a podcast. Awesome. Based around family. Yeah, so Jason and his wife, Yvette, are, are right here in our office. They also uh, have a very big Facebook group to go with Jason if you want to be on this investor Facebook group, and they're going to be starting an in-person meeting, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Collaboration, right? That's that's the key. It's not competition; it's collaboration. Yeah, that's yeah. a big one. Awesome. Let's talk about any any questions before you move forward. That, yeah. We can get more specific on oh. on building it. So there's a difference between branding and marketing, right? So so branding is I'm trying to create an impression in my client's mind, right? So so there's a positive association, and that comes through repeated exposure, right? People will go with the things that they're comfortable with. Right, so it's repeated exposure to your brand, making the messaging very, very simple, and picking one thing that's the, the value proposition, right? Mm. So just because you're buying homes for cash, I just think about, like, go research Schlitz beer. I talk about this often. Go research Ivory Soap. These are people that simply sold the exact same way all soap and all beer is made in the U.S. They just messaged it like it was something special. Hey, we distill our beer... Ivory soap is pure, and they just explained exactly how they made soap and built an entire brand off of that, mm. right? So don't, don't be afraid of explaining the obvious. For every realtor, your brand should be, I'm a fiduciary, right? I've got a legal and ethical obligation to put your needs above my own. It's the highest duty recognized under the law. Very few professions in this country have a fiduciary duty, and I take it really seriously. So we should sit down and talk so I can figure out what your needs are so I can put them above my own. Like everyone has that, but not everyone's talking about that. Mm. Yeah. That's a good one. Let's talk about the O. Yeah. Just owning that mind share of your market. That kind of leads into that branding conversation. Absolutely, right? So um, am I talking about this all the time? Do people know what I do? Do my friends and family know what I do? Right? And there's lots of ways. Like do, do my neighbors know what I do? Do people in this room know what I do? Like am I talking about this or am I running some sort of a, a business in secret. So mm -hmm. the very first step is, if you're new, is to start with prospecting. I can't network and I can't market effectively until I have a database. I probably need a database of 500 people, so the only way I'm gonna do that is by prospecting. And that, there's lots of ways you can actually prospect. Yeah, but let's talk about that. Like, what is prospecting? Awesome. So prospecting is any sort of outbound activity where I'm looking for people to get in contact with people that I don't already know, right? Where I'm actively out looking for a lead. 
And what is a lead for us? A lead is someone that is, has control of a property. Right? That's, that's a lead. So I'm looking for someone that has control of a property um, because, that, as you all know, right, this could be someone who's a landlord or it could be someone that has a primary residence that, that maybe needs our services because they can't take care of it or they're looking to cash out somehow. Right? Uh, prospecting is me making offers on property that's listed. Right? I'm going out and I'm actively engaging other people. We just had an interaction with somebody like recently, I feel like, that just kind of like was offering, like they're just like scatter shooting stuff all the time, like ripping 10, 12 offers out like consistently, like low, but it is just oh, like Oh yeah, yeah, an yeah, that is thing. true. We were talking about that like I just, I just had ago. a property come in and this is a, a national company and what they're doing is they got an unsolicited cash offer below asking. I know a guy, Andrew Bunkers in Las Vegas that runs this play and he says he has like about a 1% acceptance rate on, to 2% acceptance rates on his offers, but he's looking to buy stuff at, at 70% of fair market value. He's like, I don't need to get many of them. And then what yeah. he does is he buys them with a DSCR loan. Everybody know what a DSCR loan is? Anyone not know what a DSCR loan is? Cool. Yeah. Where's our, Great, fantastic. Where's our loan officer? Q, Will Sargent back there. Will Sargent, what's Will a Sargent, DSCR loan? Minute service credit ratio. So essentially, you got a mortgage of $1,000. You want to walk them? Yeah. Well, just to stand up or yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hard, hard I mean, to can join the limbo. <laughs> 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 so, uh, the SCR loan is a debt service coverage ratio. The main thing is property needs to appraise for the value that you're buying, obviously. Also, the mortgage that you will hold on that property, they need to be able to pr prove that the income from that property will offset that. Yes. Well, so let's, and I'm going to dumb it down because I'm not very smart, is uh, with a regular loan, they're going to look at your, your credit. They're also going to look at your ability to replay with the debt service Ratio loan, they're going to look at your credit. Stop me if I'm wrong here, but it's based off of the cash flow of the property. Credit, assets, uh, no income, no employment. Yep. So they're not looking at your income, they're not looking at your employment, employment which, which as investors, very difficult to prove. Anybody write off too much money and uh, can't take oh, advantage of credit? Either, yeah. yeah, I've learned that lesson. Of like, oh, when you make nothing on paper, <laughs> no one wants to give you money. No one wants to give you money. Imagine yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> My accountant was way too good. <laughs> Very it much is. so. Yeah, you got to future pace that a bit. So what he's doing is he's acquiring those properties, right? And then he's doing a, he's doing a burst strategy and he's refining back out his cash. At seven, so when he's buying them some low, he refines back out at 75%. They're not looking at his income, they're not looking at his assets. It's very clean. And he's been done that. He's basically rents the same 200,000 to acquire seven properties. And he sourced that by just going to friends and family, putting together a collective, putting all that money in a pool. Yeah. And then buying it through an LLC. And who is doing that? Uh, this guy, Andrew Bunkers, my buddy in Vegas. Okay, cool. He can yeah. even talk to us. Um, but it's a play you could run here as well. Yeah, I was going to say, you think about that, like a 1% or 2% acceptance rate. And if you're just ripping out 10 contracts like a day, you're locking up something I, probably every week at that, at that straight. Just for like a consistent, like just running that out. Krista, solid. that listing you, did you have, are they still, if someone came with a good offer, would they take it? No. Okay, well. Anyways, I've seen deals. Chris just had them. There, there are deals on the on yeah. the MLS, right? I see all day long that do make sense. Oh yeah, if search, you get if you get creative, search motivated seller. Like, yep, you'll find it for sure. Um, so what are we looking? I'm looking at if I'm prospecting, I could go through neighborhood groups, right? I could be either making offers of the fact like I'm looking for those, or I could be going and directly uh, messaging people. Mm -hmm. I could be messaging people who are looking to rent out properties as well to see if they might want to. Uh, lease those out. I can go through any sort of for sale by owner. Those are some other ones that you can go to. And I could also be going driving for dollars, right? Our buddy Jason McDaniel is real famous for this. So like I can go around, go door to door. I could talk to for sale by owners. And the same thing, you know, we talked about the neighborhood resource. Mm -hmm. If you've got a property that's blighted, do you think the neighbors might have an interest in seeing that property be acquired and fixed up? Do you think if you, if you talk to some of the neighbors and you did it correctly, they would try to help they you out? Happily help you out. Give you the story, put you in touch with whoever's cousin's nephew, aunt might have some information about it. Right? Those are some practical ways that we can prospect. Yeah, to, to do it a little bit. And to kind of touch on, I mean, like cold calling, certainly out there. Texting as well, like cold texting, I guess, is certainly a So we're, a we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about that as well here. Yeah, yeah. So the FCC, right, has just issued some just regulations. This is from March 16th. Yeah, this just came out. Um, 
there are some hefty fines associated with the do not call list. I've heard a lot of people here bragging about the fact, right, that they don't obey the do not call list, and that's, that's cool. People drive drunk all, every day, and also, <laughs> I've got a buddy basically ruined his life with the US. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so um, there are tens of thousands of dollars in fine associated with the do not call list. Yeah, it was pretty wild. Like, the, in, in this, where they noted in there, like the article, why we like, highlighted this is like the 500% increase in complaints over years from 2015 to 2022. Uh, so it went from like 3,300 or like 18,000 like complaints. So FCC definitely took this serious enough to like start really issuing out who gets who gets robo text every day oh yeah yeah 100%. every single every single day right nar is somebody's trying to give me insurance yeah. you're a real estate agent <laughs> yeah that every one. day the FBI. They're, they're calling to tell you they're arresting you yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so and actually jeremiah and i were talking about this because i was excited to have jeremiah here Jeremiah, we talked about like having a predictable return. And what I love when I talk to Jeremiah is he can tell you exactly like where his deals come from, what his acquisition cost is, how much it costs him to reach, you know, a prospect via uh, direct mail, via text, uh, via recorded phone okay. call. And we were just having this conversation of, right, you're saying, hey, I'm totally done with the text game because yeah. they've made these changes. Uh, I'm moving entirely out of this. Um, my buddy Luke Rivers, uh, I just sat down with him on like two days ago for like dinner. And he was telling me that they just changed this. So me, uh, I use texting to wholesale for the majority of my deals, except for one of them once I hop on radio. But um, now I'm in that position where I've made so much off of wholesaling, I don't have to deal with texting anymore. I can switch to more passive deal flow, and I'll have to deal with the risk of getting hit with these fines. It's really not worth it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, plus, I mean, I mean, I just got other things going on in my company. I don't have to sit down and market. I can just send it to the passive deal marketing structures. Sure. Still have somewhat of the same deal flow and be able to focus on my midterm operations, which is like flipping and stuff like that. Yeah. So, if if I'm cold calling and if I'm prospecting people, there's ways to do that. You really want to mm -hmm. use the do not call list. You want to explore some services. I would. Practically, if it's me, I probably would go either with a cold realty is one option that will give you do not call a list without a dialer service associated with it, or I'd get a dialer that's going to source that data for me and scrub it, and you could use, really, it's just personal preference on the data, whether you like the interface. There's Mojo, there's Red X, there's Vulcan 7, there's Espresso Agent. I have used all of them at oh. some point over my career and implemented them for somebody. I don't think there's giant differences unless we get into like the quality of the data mm. locally. We can nerd out on that. But just for protection, I would go with one of those routes. Yeah. So, so T the TCPA just totally did it in for you. I just wouldn't do it. So, I, I mean, like, I all of my deal flow before I hopped on radio came from texting. Well, that's the world we live in. Yeah. Nobody wants like, to pick up the phone and, and it sucks. You know? But like, you can read through it. There's people getting like forty thousand. Oh. oh, there's a known litigator list. Like, people, there are people that love it. That just well, love I use, to send out threatening letters and extort. You I use money. like batch leads, so yep. usually that. Scrubs out um, most of the litigators. Um, I personally never had anybody try to litigate against me. As soon as they say stop, I'm done. Yeah, sure. they automatically get filtered out. So the way that I have my system is completely automated and ran itself. Um, besides doing pre qualified leads, but um, anybody that says stop, anybody that says do not call, somebody says they report me to the FCC. Um, literally the other day, so. That's why, I mean, I guess like in a certain sense, I'm scared, but if you're gonna do it, do it right. Um, I use a system and a service that you have to be compliant to their rules, which is compliant to like FCC and stuff like that. But if you have a high opt out rate, it'll completely shut your system down and you won't be able to use it at all. So basically they're not, outlawing it because they can't outlaw a way that people make money completely i mean that's not like you know like or, or the way politicians can yeah play. like like they're not they're not going to outlaw it completely they're just going to make it impossible right. i promise you it's plus it's, so many people do it's going to get phased out anyways right it's just like mail so many people did mail people stopped doing mail moved to texting the texting is done so what are people going to move to now I, back to me. Well, back here's, to here's what I would, would share from being a mortgage broker in, two, 
Anybody see the, the Enron messages? Like burn, baby, burn, right? Grandma's out when there's the wildfires. Like, so there's all these messages. And why? Because there's an ecosystem in which uh, the norms were that everybody was acting in this way and this was normal. When I was a mortgage broker, right, I worked for a firm that had 200 agents. Only five of us were licensed. I saw fraudulent activity on a daily basis. It was fairly normal. People communicated on that, right, because what would happen? And afterwards, those people got prosecuted. Like, so I just, just because other people are doing it, this is, I mean, be aware, like, somebody is going to get caught. And if you don't have the resources to pay those fines, I have friends that have paid millions of dollars in fines. Mm -hmm. Keller Williams has had to pay millions of dollars oh, yeah. in fines. We can go deep on this afterwards. There are examples of attorneys like actively researching class action lawsuits. If you're doing some sort of robo texting and if you are having a text like what it should look like is when you sign up to Pizza Hut and you get that opt-in language and all that, it really is like a double opt-in if you're even text messaging your, your own list, right? For us to text all you guys, I should have like a disclaimer and have more, uh, more of that stuff for us to be doing it, it successfully. So mm -hmm. just do your research on that, um, especially with cold texting, because the fact that it is so easy to send out thousands of those means that it's easy for you to get like- get pinched. My God. Yes. Yeah. That's the, that's the difference, right? Yeah. That's why when I do cold call, I don't leave recorded messages when I'm dialing people. Mm -hmm. Because, right, that, that's, the, that's the thing of, okay, great, I left the same message for seven people. Really easy, I just put it in a gift wrap of like, yeah. here's, here's me using some yeah, sort of automated service. Yep. Can I ask one quick question? Yeah. Of course. So if you have a CRM, mm -hmm. that's really not cold calling or cold texting, correct? Because they are coming on to your platform so and looking at your maybe. websites so, and stuff. So it, it's yeah. automatically, if they, if they sign into our Boomtown, then we automatically text that's them. That's them giving you permission. Yeah. That's, it's, what they, that, that's, it's, that's, it depends that's not on a cold way. call. No. Because they came on to our site. It, right? it's, yeah, if they're if they, asking for information, yeah, it's, 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 it's going to depend on how you, uh, on how you uh, put that in there. It's going to depend on some specific language. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good that's a good question. But if you read like the Can Spam sure. Act, it is very very vague and it says anything that's like you could even argue that Google Voice is in violation of the Can Spam Act because you're you're creating that thing electronically. I could nerd out on this. This is just we're getting do not take my advice on this. This is just my personal thoughts from being an ISA and doing, you know, I've I've called tens of thousands of people over the years. Hmm. So just Right, that's all I did for 14 months was just call for eight hours a day for a team that had a 10,000 person database. Um, yeah. yeah, you got the, got the experience in it. Well, I don't, yeah, so let's, let's, let's move on there. What you, what you actually know, man. I mean, this is your, kind of your shine. Of, the second step two of this is just, just build through networking, networking, which is really, man, that's Yeah, so let's, let's, you. let's talk about that, um, right? So what, what is networking, right? Networking for me is, is how do I come from value? And I think Charles is a, is a great example, right? Super I came out to his platform yeah. yesterday. He was really excited to, to see us. You know, we didn't know how to read a calendar, so there was a long time. We, had this, we were on the same night, and then we moved it so we could actually go to both, right? And Charles was like, yeah. And he was like, hey, great. Welcome. Let me introduce you around. Who do you need to know, right? So it's, it's coming from, from contribution. And the biggest advice I can give from networking is we can all smell when someone is, like, just very transactional. Oh, yeah. Don't be transactional. No one likes that person. They're not going to make money in the long term. This is a very small town, mm -hmm. right? So it's basically, it's the go-giver, right? Like, what's my business? What I want to do is come from contribution, and I want to make it very clear how to reward me, right? And you can do that in lots of ways. You've probably been doing it in your personal life. Anybody know somebody that you can think of that's got a very distinct taste? I used to have a friend, Tut, he passed away. Tut loved the color green. He loved the Gs. He loved Mickey Mouse. So I got more gifts than anyone I knew. Because it was very easy when you were out to just be like, oh, yeah, yeah I know you want these shell toes. Like, I bought them for you, give them back, like, right? So making it very clear, like, how do you reward me? Like, what business am I, am I in? So anybody can think of an example, whether it's pharmaceutical sales or some sort of rep that goes business to business that you've dealt with before, that you've had a positive experience with? Anybody had a good experience with any vendor relationship in their life? <laughs> every, every single IT vendor that comes in at a awesome. company. They, they'll take you out to lunch. They want your business. They're going to talk about their product. 
Yeah. And it's going to be a, a very interesting conversation, usually. Have you had any that are really cool? Yeah, no, yeah. there's been plenty of cool ones. Awesome, right? So, so like I have some too. We have like a title rep or something like that. We have people that are do. And, and what they, they do, do consistently is like, hey, here's who I am and here's what I do. I'm a home warranty rep. If you need a home warranty, call me. And then they show up all the time and they're making connections and you know, but you know, like, oh, when I need a home warranty, I do that. That's my right? person. Yep. That's my person. Chris is is a great resource, right? Chris is is a private money lender, right? You can call Chris about lots of other things. Same thing. Jesse just said he's great at structuring deals. I think he said basically call me and I'll happy to look at deals for you. Underwrite it. And then, hey, I'm a property manager. When you need property management help, you know what I do, like naturally. You can call me all day long and never have property management because it's fine. Someone in your network, it all comes back. Um, yeah, that's a big one. So it's really being clear on how do I get rewarded? How do I go attend events? And I call it fiduciary friendship. And this is something, if I'm being candid, I think I do at, at a high level. Actually, I'm not being, I, I know I do this at a high level, uh, at, like nationally, right? You know, I have an insane network nationally, and we've been able to bring some national level speakers here and put on an entire conference, and they all came in on their own dime because of friendships that I built. And really what it looks like is I went to real estate conferences, and I heard some, some coaches, and I was like, okay, no one knows their coaches. There's 20,000 people that are just walking around, and they're like, hey, Ken, what's going on in your business? How can I help you? I was like, that's a great question. I don't know what to say to these people. This is weird, right? I don't want to talk about, I'm not a big deal at all. I'm from Knoxville. I don't sell a lot of real estate. Corey's more successful than me, right? Like, this is not like, so what do I do? Well, I'm really interested in what's going on in them. And then I've got a great brain. I've been doing this a long time, so I know who to go to, and I know who the solutions are, and I know how this stuff works mm. together. That I do know at a high level. I've got a lot of knowledge. I love talking about this stuff. So, hey, so who do you want to meet? Like, what's going on in your business? I call it fiduciary friendships. I gotta ask you enough questions to really understand what you're doing and then have that radar of like, okay, great, great, great property manager, who could sync together, how can I give you some advice? And I think that's a foolproof method for networking is just being interested in other people. When other people are talking, right? If, if me and you are having a conversation, what's happening is when you're talking, you're building rapport. When I sit up here and I talk to all of you, it does not build rapport because it's a one way it's a one-way conversation, right? When I ask Jason about what's going on with him or what's going on with his son, and he's telling me all about his son, just absolutely deking him in soccer. Just going right through the five hole, right? Then he's building rapport because he's talking about himself, which is all of our favorite topic, right? You mm -hmm. know, um, is, is what are you passionate about? What's going on in your life? Taking a personal interest? Because honestly, everyone wants more friends. Mm -hmm. There's research on this. So go read Bowling Alone. You can read The Lonely Crowd in the 1950s. This has been, a, been tracking since the invention of the suburbs. When we broke up, like, if you go all the way back, they talk about uh, cornerstone versus uh, capstone relationships. So if you go back to like the 30s, 40s, when people were living in like, urban areas, you would marry somebody on your block. You would marry someone in the same building as you. And you'd marry them in the 20s, and you'd build a life together, and you would just know that all boys are dumb. So I'm going <laughs> to stick with my dumb boy. Right, because <laughs> you're a dumb boy is equally dumb, right? And we've moved to like capstone relationships where we get married in our 30s and we're looking yeah. for people, right, who are successful and it's more brittle. Um, going back, we see this decline in relationships. And what the social science tells us is that we all want to have closer relationships and deeper relationships. What COVID showed us was what happens with tertiary relationships, weak relationships like this, right? Hey, I go to grid every day and I see the same people and like, Oh man, I always have a good interaction with Khalil. Charles is cool. Like I forgot how much you know I like seeing Dion or Jeremiah. I, so when I was going, we were lucky, but lots of places in the country, the guy you see at the coffee shop or at the dog park simultaneously, that's what makes you feel like you have a community, and that's what makes you feel like a tribe. Mm -hmm. So when you're going out and talking to your database, what would it look like if you just talked to the people in your community four times a year, you took an interest in what was going on with them, you made some connections within there, provided some resources, hey, this is going on, added something of value, had the law of reciprocity come around, do you think like your year would be better, right? Whether or not you make some money, would that be a cool year? Are you gonna enjoy yourself? Are you gonna feel like you added value? Absolutely. Yeah, so you're gonna feel confident about talking to strangers? That's how you go build a network, right, successfully, and then you have to go have some items of value and I, I provide some expert information. Mm -hmm. But I think if you just adopt that mindset of like, how do I add that value? That's how you're intentional 
about being a, a nice person is like, I'm actively doing this and then we're creating things like this where I'm gonna see you. You don't have to create your own, borrow platforms. This is a platform, I see lots of people here, right? Jason invited Justin, like, because we said borrow our platform. More in the room, it's better for everybody, right? Tomorrow night, we started a nonprofit called Pints for Purpose. It is a 501c3, it is totally unbranded, all the money that gets raised gets passed on. That is a free networking event to meet people with like-minded individuals that care about our community. So if you can't get people to come out with dogs and beer, <laughs> then sales and marketing might be kind of challenging. <laughs> yeah. But we did that deliberately because we, I ran a young professionals organization here, I just stepped down. Um, and we launched Grid. So we've yep. been doing this for two years. We Almost launched two years now. Two years ago in June yeah. of 2021. Yep. Right? And Corey Crazy. is incredible. He's let me talk about this. Corey's incredible about this on a local networking level. So what did you do um, and the restaurant level? Yeah, um, that was always, because I was essentially in my own bubble of a restaurant, I had to do it with people that were coming to me and sitting at the bar. And then it became... So and so needs this contract. You know, you're, talk, you're small talk when I'm a you know restaurant manager walking around, just kind of chatting with with customers, and then be, you realize you're talking with UPS guy Dave, and Dave's talking about, dude, my roof just started leaking. Whatever, he's got some issue. And then at the other end of the bar is one of roofing contractor who comes in like all the time, and then it just became a game of, oh, like Dave, meet John. John, you too. Here's a beer on the house. Go talk and be merry. And it was really fun just to play that connector role because the restaurant was that hub in the community that people were just coming after work to hang out on weekends, et cetera. And then it was fun for me to go play that connector there at that like hyper local level. I just couldn't get out into the community as much. It was just as the community came to me, well, I was able to kind of connect everybody. But you did do some prospecting because what Corey realized is like, so little league teams oh, yeah. and schools are great niches, right? Why? Because they all go out to celebrate. Because they all got to go out and do stuff. So like, after the yeah, game, I, I would reach out intentionally to like all the principals at all like the elementary schools like around us, right? The guys at like the local fire department right around the corner, because then they all have families and things. So that was my like outbound uh, marketing, doing charity events, putting on probably one of my favorite ones we did was a. 5k run in the park that we paired with like a dog adoption and then the restaurant sponsored hey if you adopted one of the dogs that like say the sheriff's department brings out uh we would cover that adoption fee and then you could check the dog out and go run trails and stuff like that and so that was our ways of like prospecting and getting out into the community um more and more we'll kind of tap into some of the the marketing aspects of it right, here so soon we're, we're able to use right this kind of example we would do like our shark week uh every week is our big like one of our uh, big sponsorship things every month um, that I was able to do just get out there. I'm a big fan of ripping off movies. I'm not going to lie so, uh, so when it comes to this kind of thing. Like, what, do you, what do you think of, what's the brand for Long Doggers, if you have to guess, based off of this and based off of Noah and Corey? Throw, some, throw some, some things out that are seen there. Is the brand family friendly? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Community um, hub? Yeah. Awesome. What else? What, what else? Drinker friendly? Yeah, it's fun. Fun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a neighborhood watering hole. Cheers, everyone knows your name. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, so that's, that's how you're using, using branding, branding like to advance marketing. Yeah. Let's get back say, over that I'll one. Say one of my favorite ones like, <laughs> I've used recently here is like, right, you can have fun with this. Like I said, I'm a fan of ripping off movies, but like you can put stuff together to throw out there. Like, is your home a Titanic pain in the ass? Like, call me, right? I'll buy it. Um, <laughs> Why did you put your bag in the gap? You know, I don't know. <laughs> Leo looks nice. It's all good. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with it. Wait, was that a fail or right. uh, This is like stuff that I just honestly mess around like midnight board. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I know my Photoshop skills are a little listen. like subpar, but we're, listen, we're working listen. at it. Listen, <laughs> how many of y'all are doing cheesy social media posts? Because Rudyard Kipling would say it's the man in the arena. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see your dorky yeah, it's, posts. It, yes. It's really just about like creating something, just creating activity that's going to create some engagement out of there that you can kind of put out there. So like I said, I'm a fan of always like just ripping off stuff people are already kind of familiar with that they can then identify with a little bit and have a little fun with overall. Which, can we break this down really fast? Yeah, Cool. Totally. Do you guys know um, Don Miller? Anybody know Don Miller and Story? I can't think of his name. If you're seeing this guy, he talks about the hero's journey, right? So when we're talking about marketing and we're talking about narrative, it's how do you take your client on an emotional journey? So we're talking about the hero's journey, so you wanna go read that. You wanna read Joseph Campbell and the Power of Myth. 
right? And if you don't think narrative is important, then why is Netflix and why are the Hollywood studios worth so much? Why, are, why is Marvel worth so much? It's, it's all intellectual property. It's based around narrative and storytelling, right? So it is just what he would say on this one, although I love the fact that you're, you're Kate Winslet in here because I do think <laughs> that's, that's appropriate. <laughs> Pay me like one of your French girls. <laughs> yeah, I think that's... Um, but you'd want to be taking your client on the, on the journey, right? They said the way that you do this correctly is you take your client on the hero's journey and you're in the role of the sage. So you're Gandalf, you're Yoda. Like that's where you are. You don't change. The client changes on this journey, right? The client is dealing with the titanic pain in the ass, you know, and you're going to, uh, uh, I've never seen Titanic, but I know enough about it. Like, because I haven't, <laughs> I might resent Leo. <laughs> well, she doesn't. She doesn't. Yeah, so you're going to take her on the journey to the door, right? And then you're just going to let her just go off because it doesn't, doesn't matter if you have enough room on the door, right? I'm taking my client on that, on that journey, on the marketing journey, right? Yeah. So everyone here, you are a problem solver. And if you do this effectively, people will call you, ask you to buy their house as cash, will celebrate the amount of money that you made, and thank you. I still get messages. Angie. Angie just sent me another. I was quoting no her today. It was, I sent that one to you, right? No, I haven't seen that. Oh, so we had a client. We sold this place on Ashland, and she is. Uh, uh, she asked us to come buy it cash, because she wanted to move to Myrtle Beach, and she is every day posting, like living her best life in Myrtle Beach. And she's like, "I hope you make a ton of cash. I need this much money. If you just give this to me, I just want to go. I'm done. I do not want to clean this up. I do not want to sell it, right?" And she knows exactly how much money she made, and she reaches out to me at like Christmas to thank me for buying the house. Like that's that's our that's our avatar. So yeah, how do we market the, to them? Yeah, so that's the power of it. I mean, the, the next end of it, right, just becomes like starting to nurture uh, and grow in that database overall. Yep. Certainly, it starts off with just incubating your database, um, regularly engaging with your people, right? That's where we Justin talked a little bit before about reaching out to people on sort of like somewhat of like a quarterly basis. Does everyone have a database in here? Does anybody not have a database in here? It's cool if you're not. I love the honesty. Yep. Cool. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. So uh, what does, when you say database, right? Yeah. Is this like your group of friends or people you find in contact with? Great question. If you've got, got a phone, right, go to your contacts, you have a database. You've got a list of people that have given you, right, their contact information. Yes. Right. Be more specifically, though, like, do I have a database would just be like, what's the health, what's the quality of that, right, mm -hmm. Corey? We can go nerd out on that. But really it is just like, who is the database of people? I would not limit it just to people that are interested in your service. Yeah. I and really... Say anybody that you've ever contacted or communicated with in some way. That UPS guy you were telling me about? Yeah, Dave. May never, but he'd be like the best person to be in the database, right? He's out in the community all day long. Yeah, he knows everybody. Women swoon when they see his calves, <laughs> right? You would, you would want to have... Dave the UPS guy yeah, in your database. Abs absolutely. So it's just everyone that you know who knows I can trust you. As much as you, you may laugh about that, that FedEx, uh, my, my brother-in-law's FedEx, and um, he has a reporting line that he can report drug houses. So mm -hmm. your FedEx and, and UPS guy yeah. may actually have a good idea of houses in certain neighborhoods that look bad, that are trash, or he suspects it's a drug house because there's certain activities that they've been told to look for that they then report to the sheriff or yeah. report to local authorities. Yeah. So, you know, I, I was flabbergasted when uh, they told me that. Absolutely. I, I, love, I love like Uber drivers, DoorDash drivers, big fans of all them from my background in hospitality. Like I love those kind of people and those are great people to communicate with because they're literally on the road all day, every day, going to all different houses, things like that. And I have a handful of them that I'll get together with like once a month, we'll go out and get a, get a beer, get lunch or something like that. And it's very much just, hey, anytime you see something that just looks like crap, take a picture of it, write down the address and like shoot it over to me. Cool, I just create like a little network of little bird dogs that all they do is just drive around and do their thing and then just send me pictures of trashed houses. Most people, if you're an agent, would not think to, to invite a room that's half full of agents, right? And yet what happens is their agents do not want to deal with investors yeah. and they send us deals. Yeah. Are there agents that want to learn right, how to invest? And we want to help them learn how to invest because we care about them. I would argue if you're invested in other people, everyone's in your database. If you're just focused on how can I come from contribution, right? Because that's, you, you cannot lose that game. 
of how can I be the nicest person in there, provided I've got some sort of marketing. And prospecting is regularly reminding you what I do and how to reward me, making it very clear. Right? Mm -hmm. That's why at the beginning of this, we say, here's who we are and what we're looking for. And at the end, we're going to say, here's how you connect with us and stay in touch. And the rest of it is just, how can we help you? Mm -hmm. Model that. So what do you look like when you're doing, like, what do I, what's the next step? I have some kind of a database. I have a query. database. Like, what's, practically in 2023, am I, like, mailing out postcards that say, like, turn your clocks back? <laughs> am I sending fridge magnets? Like, what am I doing to stay no, in touch with these people? No, I think certainly, like, you know, we live in very much like a digital age. So, like, your digital content, I mean, even just reminding people on, like, a Facebook post, here's what I am, here's what I do, is just going to consistently, like, refresh in there. I'm a big fan of like a handwritten note on a semi-regular like regular basis, make it like a nice little handwritten note in the mail. Just as a reminder, again, something to just keep you top of mind and engage with somebody is whatever you can kind of do in that space, whether that is social media. I'm a big fan of like birthdays as well. So some of you might have gotten like a Facebook video birthday yeah, go ahead. message from me. Here's go for a service it. that we use called Send Out Cards. Yep. And you can actually create a card. And what I do, like one of my clients, their dog died. So I went on their Facebook page, I copied the picture of their dog, I put their dog on the front, a picture of her and her dog on the inside, and then wrote, sorry, your dog passed away. She put that on Facebook, mm -hmm. said I had the greatest realtor, and that was not my intentions whatsoever, but something simple like that does go a long way. Um, who in here thinks that investing is like a net positive for the community? Yeah? Why? What's, what's, why? what's useful to the community about investing? You mean you're not just taking advantage of people? Like why? What's, what's good about investing? Because more than likely you're buying the home that's the worst in the neighborhood and making it look like the best. Awesome. awesome. That's, that's a great, that's that's a great, great story. Thank you for digital content, content on that. Mm -hmm. Who else? Who's got for, for land, we build developments which bring more opportunity for more people to live in a certain community. Yeah. I love it. Who else? Um, so actually recently my last house that I got under contract, uh, maybe uh, she's had, she got it from her grandfather like 20 years ago, and uh, she has cancer. So it was pretty cool to like be like, hey, like, I can give you this much for your house. I actually took some off my assignment fee that I was going to make to give this lady more cash. Mm -hmm. And um, it was really cool. Because I mean, like, money's good for the good that it can do, right? Money's good, yeah. I mean, like, imagine what she can do with like the, the property for like 150 grand. You know what I mean? Like that's a life changing amount of money for a woman that has cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, just like what you said with your story about that lady that went down for. You know what I mean? She's gonna be able to live the best life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so when, when you're creating marketing, keep this in mind. First of all, everyone that attends here should create a piece of marketing. Take a picture. There's a packed room full of people. This is powerful. And why are you here? And it's not like it's. No one cares you just sold a property. No one cares you just acquired a property. Like, why is that important to them? Hey, I'm excited we're fixing up another one I love, improving communities. Hey, I came out today and I wanted to learn about investing because I want to tell other people, like, come on this journey with me, right? Hey, I was out here prospecting and networking. Like, that's the story that you tell. Like, so tell that story, mm -hmm. right? Take a selfie, whatever, grab one here in the middle. Actually, I'm about to take a picture right here while we're doing this core. You can take over. Yeah, totally. But that was, that's my biggest advice. If you're a realtor or you're, you're attending this kind of training, post about it, but always make it clear, like, how does it benefit your potential client? Your potential person. If you don't do that, it just looks like, I don't know, my realtor loves taking vacations and getting drunk with agents, <laughs> which is probably accurate, but I'm doing it for you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, in doing, doing enough of that, like, consistently, right, is going to create that engagement. And that's going to give you the opportunity to uh, create the opportunities, nurture those, and then ultimately convert that over, uh, convert those opportunities over to some kind of business. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> All right. Right. Uh, so it's really just in that steps of, like, incubating and, like, nurturing your people, right, creating consistent uh, marketing and branding around that that's just going to keep that impression in their mind that's going to give you the opportunity to then later convert those opportunities when they do present themselves. Because I've often found that I can't really do too much to like Jedi mind trick somebody into doing something that they don't ultimately want to do. Right? Life is like a natural funnel. And in that, if I can just be the most like helpful and giving and just prepared, life will sort itself out and hopefully they'll remember me as like, hey, Corey, nice guy, real estate. I will totally do business with Corey. Why wouldn't I do it? Sales um, is like Incidental, that was the weird phrase we had recently. And tell the story. Yeah. Right? Not everyone is going to read it, but think about this. If 
when's the last time that most of you that are not egomaniacs, like, no, but they don't run like a group, got to tell a story to 30 people at the same time? Does that happen often? We have 30 people listening to you. But when I go and I share a story on Instagram or something and like 25 people watch it, I was like, oh, this is, this is terrible. These aren't numbers. If 20 people that know, like, and trust you actually listen to what you're saying for 60 seconds, that's pretty cool. Yeah. They probably don't want to hear this story when you're all hanging out on Easter Sunday, but they will go and read it when there's doom scrolling, mm -hmm. right? Oh, well, I had no idea. And what you're going to find is no one will respond for like a year. And then your cousin will be like, oh, I've been watching everything you do. I watch it every single time. It's amazing. And you're like, cool, I do this into the void sometimes. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it is really weird to be like taking pictures of myself, yeah. you know, like. It, it is a, it's a compounding effect and it is something that like does circle back on there. I had a gal hit me up nine o'clock last night that I last engaged with even. So I was like, I texted just uh, September 13th of like last year. And it was um, just like, hey, haven't heard from you, this and that. And don't want to be a pest. Right? Just let me know the best way to follow up. And it was just crickets after that. And then like nine o'clock last night, get a little message. Vi Crazy. Video messages, couple things. Mm -hmm. Canva posts get suppressed by Facebook. They're actively looking for it. They're actively suppressing it because you look like a business, right? And they want you to pay for that engagement. What will get the most engagement is having a photo, preferably a photo of yourself, right? We're obsessed with faces. Yeah, they love Think selfies. Think Nick Jr., the giant face. Like humans gravitate towards those. Right, and then using a caption to like tell that story, like making it very, very clear. Cool. Mm -hmm. The last E is just kind of goes into uh, to empowering your community, right? And that kind of starts oftentimes with just education. I mean, certainly events like this, but you all have something to be able to give to your respective like databases, and so just being that source of value, source of education to them, will inevitably return on itself. Yes, self-esteem is based upon esteemable actions. That's what Nathaniel mm. Brandon said when he wrote The Pillars of Self-Esteem. Um, so yeah, like how am I coming from contribution and how am I coming in a way that internally, right, feels like I'm coming from contribution. If you do that, you will become, because your job is to go, we already did this last time, so go watch how to identify motivated sellers. It's to uncover problems and then to solve problems. That's it, like Charles was saying, right? I go talk to the resource officers and they like, please, yes, f find someone to go buy this house because we're sick of having a trap house in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. You got certainly uh, attending local events, right? Yeah. Things like this, going to our Pints event tomorrow. Great opportunities, invite your people out there. I mean, you're right, that's a free platform for anybody to use. And yeah, if you can't sell dogs. And, and I've been beer. doing this forever. Remember Sundown in the City? Remember, remember Farragut back in the day when no one would go downtown because it was scary? Because there was homeless people on the 100 block. You couldn't get them to go to sundown in the city. And then all their dumb kids came down there and they started underage drinking and we can't have it anymore. I do. Pepperidge Farm members. <laughs> but I remember being waiting tables in, o, in 05 at Bravo and I would tell every single person about this thing because I've always been an evangelist. I get excited about this stuff. You can add a ton of value just telling strangers about things. Mm -hmm. I, I wish it was more complicated. Most of what we do as realtors and investors is pretty commonsensical. Right? Mm -hmm. Just who has the most conversations wins. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And it's just uh, engaging with local businesses. That's a huge one. Ch Charles, what made you want to start this, this Sono group? Because I love that you were telling us the story of the Southside Garage. As yeah. Right. So um, what made you start that group and get involved like, like, in, in, your, in your community? So that was, so I only had one property at the time. My parents had a few houses that we had renovated ourselves, and I didn't know anybody. So I wanted to meet people, so I started a Facebook group, and then it was three of us. It was in the middle of 2020, <laughs> and then just we had some tough times, and then just grew into what it is. Uh, people want to be around uh, people who are either starting or have a lot of knowledge like you guys, um, and you can always get something from somebody. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I needed a network, so I didn't know. I tried to do the RIA thing. And, didn't want to pay for it. Yep. And then uh, I was like, well, I'd, I'd like to stay in my own neighborhood. There's not one here, so I did it there. So Powell Halls, they don't have anywhere. Barry, you guys are serving this area, so I think there could be more. 100%. <coughs> there, there 100% can be yeah. more. Like you're here, we're going to move locations in June yeah. as we're going to go to Foundation Mortgage has a bigger space. They're over on North Shore in that business park right in between 
Kroger so, and, uh, and... It's like across from that Kroger Plaza right there, like Pellissippi and North yes. Shore. I was there earlier. Yeah. Yes. I was wondering where everyone else was. <laughs> he is so prepared. Yeah. He went to scout the location 60 days earlier. Get you a lender that, that will do that for you. <laughs> um, we'll be able to seat. Everyone will have seats. Yeah. So they won't be standing in the hallway. Uh, um, and, you know, I don't know why I was bringing this up. We're moving locations. There's a reason for it. I don't know. Well, it's all just... Uh... Oh, we talked about just there's there's more space. Oh, for so the story for that, and then Jason and then Jason and Yvette are going to be starting a space, which I think should be here, starting a meeting, which should, which should be here. There's there's uh, there's you get more when you actually have more competition. Um, there's an ec economics podcast, Planet Money, yeah, that yeah. talks about this. Well, more vendors, more I've vendors. Guys on my group. Oh yeah. Years and you haven't sent one already. Maxwell Real Estate Investors Group. Have you ever sent anything? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold that. You guys can grab that afterwards. Yeah. Um, Planet Money is a great podcast on on money. Started during the, the last crash. I learned a lot of things about basic economics from them. And they did a study talking about like the flower markets in New York City, where like in New York City, you think it'd be crazy. You go to the street and it is nothing but flower vendors, and they actually all make more money rather than less because the fact that there's so many of them attracts more people. It's why vintage markets work. It's why some of these other concepts work. So, what? It's why a mall works. Sure. Mm -hmm. We'll go yeah. to the mall. Yeah. The there's, there's, there's collective power. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, but that leads us in a spot, right? Just by, by following these kind of steps, we call that like that zone marking just gives you a, an area to really focus and highly target to then go out and start your marketing machine that's just going to lead to that consistent there predictable is income. tons of data on what we just ran through. We try to explain this in a very, like we can nerd out on this. Like there is tons of real estate data that's totally based around this of just like how many prospects, how many conversations you have to have, how many touches you have to have to convert to business. So if you just do this organically, if you follow that zone system, that will work. That's how the founder of, of Grid built a $160 million team. He pulls a million dollars a year out of his Grid chapter just by providing value, and he's got grid chapters in 32 cities, just following this same exact system of, hey, what's my avatar? How am I gonna own that mind share, mm -hmm. right? How do we build a network around it? it? And then uh, just engage that just consistently, like working yes. through it, educating. And honestly, guys, it really is like borrow. Borrow people's platforms, you do not collaborate. Jump on Instagram with each other, like you do not have to do this alone. If the biggest problem you have is how do we split up this business that we generated together, we're all going to be okay. Yeah. I, I promise. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. It is. We went way past time. Eight o'clock. So I appreciate everyone staying here. Yeah. It is. It is eight p.m. So if anyone needs to to jet, get home cool. to the babysitter. Cool. Questions. Ahas. Insights. Take Listen. Takeaways. Anybody get any value out of today? Yes. yes. Great. So maybe, what, what, what are you, you going to ask us when we get out there? Where do you find the code violation list for Knoxville? Code violation list. I just know it's from the city. I have not pulled it. Um, I can help you figure that out, though, Joel, if we can't, like, like tomorrow or Friday. Okay, cool. <laughs> Look up syntaxes on Google, and then there's one that's dash site. So look up code violations dash site and whatever the Knoxville code site is, and the Google spiders probably already found it for you. Hmm. Awesome. And Nick can explain that again afterwards, and we can pull it up here when the meeting's over. Yeah. No, no, really, because yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah, for real. It's Google is your friend. That's Nikita. Yes. Yes. You don't know Nikita. Nikita is an incredible resource. Incredible resource. Right? So Nikita is very active in, in East Knoxville. And Nikita started a, a nonprofit called Don't Sell Grandma's House. Right? Um, and Nikita is an investor herself. Um, and I love it. Yes. Anybody, anybody else? Give me two more ahas. Make Corey happy. I learned that I can harass the FedEx guy. <laughs> Shake down your mailman. I like that. Yeah. That's a good one, man. That's this creative one. I like that. I like that.
like I like the. Uh, that guy's gonna hate it though. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned harassing him. I've learned that uh, that you can't know everything. You know, there's always something new to learn. Yes. yes. And I was just asking everyone. We're just hearing everyone's thoughts. There's uh, something new to learn. Mm -hmm. Any questions on branding, marketing? Anyone questioning how this applies to their individual business? No. We good. Um, wow, yes. Very, very long list. Um, Corey has coached with Jessica, Jessica Swingle. Swingle. That runs, so we'll give you her information. That runs all the branding for Grid. She's an expert on branding. Okay. Um, there are some other really good YouTube accounts that I think are experts on, on branding. There's some really good uh, exercises. There's a couple books that I use. Um, gosh, that I'll think about. There's a copywriting handbook that I got from Adweek, and there's another... I'll think of the two of them that I use for like for a copy. Basically, when I look, what I look for on this stuff is I don't go niche. If I want to go to branding, I'm going to go for the best branding expert. Not it's not niche specific, right? Yeah. So I taught myself like how to do a SWOT analysis. I was like, what do what do marketing companies do? Oh, they do a strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and like uh, target analysis. I can learn how to do that and fake my way through owning a marketing company, mm -hmm. right? Um, anybody have any resources on branding that you like a lot? Um, there's a couple of like a marketing manager. Marketing manager? Because I work with one and they have run some all of my TV and my, well, just my TV and my Facebook paper clip ads. And this lady's insanely uh, good at her job. Oh, yeah. So hire, find somebody oh, yeah. that does exactly that and does it for a living. That would be my move. Um, the other thing, I'll come to you right there in a second, would be get clarity on your avatar. Probably your avatar often is someone like us. Like, who's my avatar? Meaning, like, who's my ideal client? Like, what do they do? Where do they shop? Where do they go? Where would I find my ideal avatar? If it's a distressed homeowner, it might be a different kind of avatar. Like, what are they doing? Where are they shopping? Where could I go to meet those people? Right? If I want to be in, so if I wanted to go meet buyers in the south, I might go to the south side farmer's market. I might go to that, that farmer's market on the east side and meet people in the community. Like, that might be how I form relationships mm -hmm. if I want to go invest because I want to build relationships within the, the community. Locally. Yes. Uh, there's a, a guy, uh, Joe Ignitz, that uh, he does podcasts and branding. Uh, he'll gladly sit down with you at a coffee shop and discuss okay. very briefly. <laughs> and then if you want to continue from there, you can. Awesome. Thank you. So, cool. We're going to hang around. We're going to network. It's 8.01, so I appreciate everyone's patience and going, and going a little long. Um, Corey, how do they connect with us? Sorry. We want to thank Approach Lending. We want to make Admiral. What's yeah. the last one here? No, yeah, we just, want to, we just want to thank all of our vendors. We want to thank Admiral Title. We want to thank Approach Lending for hooking us up here. Um, make sure you go in. Find us on a meetup, uh, meetup.com. There you can register for our next event. That's going to be how to estimate renovations, analyze costs, minimize your mistakes. Big one, right? Once you kind of found the deal, how do I calculate, like, how much is this going to cost me? Trust me, I just learned a hard lesson. Jay, can you stop the recording? Right. Awesome. Cool. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.